Like the other chapters in this module, we will not be discussing everything that is in the textbook in the visual system. So mostly we're going to talk about, um, well, what's in the learning objectives, of course. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the visual system and um, basically its function, um, really tiny bit about its anatomy, um, and then about disorders of the visual system. There is um, a lot of lovely information in the book about the eye movement system and the involvement of the cranial nerves in eye movement, and we are not going to talk about that. So the learning objectives, um, I want you to be able to list the primary functions of the visual system. There are four of them. Um, the objectives of eye movements, I want you to briefly be able to describe the vestibular ocular reflex. And then I want you to be able to describe the etiology, pathology, signs, and symptoms of bitemporal hemianopsia, also known as bitemporal hemianopia, and homonymous hemianopsia, or hemianopia. So you'll see it written both ways. Both are correct, just to make it interesting. Um, the visual system, the four things that it does, it provides sight. That's pretty important. Provides processing of visual information, recognition, and location of objects. Um, it provides control of eye movement, and it provides information that's used in postural and limb movement control. That makes sense, right? So um, the visual system is one of those things that really contributes a lot of sensory information um, to balance and to movement. However, we can function without vision. So obviously there are people who are visually impaired who function in society, um, but lacking these um, the inputs from the visual system, they have to compensate a lot um, for um, that lack of input. Just like anything, when you have an injury to any particular sensory area, you have to compensate for that lack of sensory input. I have worked with visually impaired people in the pool um, the water gives them some additional sensory information so they can help control their posture and movements. Um, and just working on um, movement and um, strengthening and balance is important for people with um, visual impairments. So the sight information is conveyed from the retina to the cortex. So the retina is um, formed by photosensitive cells the light strikes the retina as, and is encoded or converted into neural signals um, by those photosensitive cells, those retinal output cells. So the axons from the retina travel in the optic nerve through the optic chiasm, where um, some of the axons cross the midline and some of them don't. Um, and then in the optic tract to the lateral gen, uh, geniculate nucleus of the thalamus and then to the primary visual cortex, which is in the um, occipital lobe of the cerebrum. So um, it has, there's a lot of interesting things about this pathway that are different from other neural pathways. So, the optic nerve is a bundle of axons that pass from the retina to the optic chiasm. And at the optic chiasm, the nerves merge, some of them cross and some of them don't. Um, the nasal half, so if you think about the eye, sort of the medial and the lateral um, part of the eye or part of the retina, the medial part we call the nasal half because it's the part close to your nose. And the lateral half we call the temporal half because it's closer to your ears, closer to the temporal lobe. So the nasal half of the retina information crosses the midline at the chiasm, uh, the chiasm and projects to the contralateral visual cortex. The temporal half of the retina information continues ipsilaterally through the chiasm and to the ipsilateral visual cortex. So only half of the information from each eye stays on the same side and the other half goes to the other side. Um, so this arrangement delivers visual information from one visual field to the opposite visual cortex. So light from the right visual field strikes the left half of each retina and um, light from the left half of the field strikes the right half of each retina. So this, um, figure from the book 
which is um, figure 21.3, um, portrays that. It does it in color coding, which you know how much I love color coding. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's almost turned around from what we would um, expect to see. Just, you know, pretty interesting, I think. So the visual information from the right visual field activates neurons in the left half of the retina on both eyes. Um, axons from the temporal half of the retina project ipsilaterally, um, and axons from the nasal half cross the midline at the optic chiasm to project to contralateral, to the contralateral side. So all of the visual, visual information from the right visual field projects to the left lateral side, and then all of the things from the left visual field project to the right lateral side. Um, it's just each, the half of each eye is different, and that's going to produce some of the effects that we see with um, disorders. Um, so it's a little more complicated than um, what pathways we've seen before. The information um, reaching the primary visual cortex stimulates neurons that discriminate the size, shape, and texture of objects. So when we talk about the cerebral cortex, we're going to talk about a lot of different cortical areas. There's usually the primary cortex and the association cortex. So um, a huge amount of our cerebral cortex is dedicated to association neurons. So it's neurons that's comparing information that we know, processing that information, and coming out with something we can use, basically. So um, the primary visual cortex says, um, okay, I see something, it's, it's spherical, um, it's small, and it's smooth. And it passes that information to the association cortex. And then the association cortex analyzes it for color and motion. And association cortex says, okay, I see your um, small, spherical, um, smooth thing. It's white, and it's coming towards me. So the, um, there are two different streams. The action stream is a stream of visual information that flows dorsally in the cerebral cortex and is used to direct movement. The perception stream is a stream of visual information that flows ventrally and it's used to recognize visual objects. So that perception stream says, oh, it's a ping pong ball. And the action stream says, pick up your paddle and hit that thing back to the other side of the table. So it requires a lot of different areas in the brain to do that action. Kind of neat, right, how it processes that visual information. When we talk about the cerebral cortex, we'll talk more about that multi-level processing. So the visual system, um, you can have disorders that affect different areas of that pathway, that retino genicular cortical pathway. So from the retina to the um, thalamus to the cortex. Um, visual losses are usually described by referring to the visual field deficit. So um, what's, you know, what is, what's missing, basically? So in this um, diagram in the book, it's a two-parter, actually. Um, and one part is here, and the other part's on the next slide. It's uh, figure 21.6. And it's talking about the results of lesions at various locations in the um, vision system. So um, you can see if you, because of the way the um, tracks cross over and some of them go to one side, some of them go to the other side, you'll get different effects. So um, complete interruption of the optic nerve, which is number one on here, um, results in ipsilateral blindness so and loss of the direct pupillary light reflex in the on the side where the optic nerve is interrupted um, <clears throat> the optic nerve is entirely myelinated by oligodendrocytes and it's frequently affected by multiple sclerosis so some of the cranial nerves um, that are more in the periphery are um, innervate or uh, myelinated by schwann cells the optic nerve is entirely within the cranium and it's entirely myelinated by oligodendrocytes. So since those are the cells affected in multiple sclerosis, um, you frequently get visual effects, optical nerve effects. So um, <clears throat> that's, that's something that you see a lot in MS. So let me get to the right thing. 
Okay, <clears throat> so talking about the visual field deficit, the complete lesion of the retina or optic nerve um, results in total loss of vision in the ipsilateral eye. That's number one on this slide. Um, bitemporal hemianopia re, um, results in loss of information in both temporal visual fields. So this is if you have a lesion in the um, chiasm, in the uh, because so you'll get the um, half of the visual field in each eye, and it's the temporal part of the visual field. So it's loss of information in both visual fields from a lesion in the chiasm. Homonymous hemianopia or hemianopsia is loss of visual information from the same visual field right or left in both eyes. So that's number three on here. <clears throat> so that is really going to be a lesion that's somewhere between the optic chiasm and the thalamus, the um, lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus. So it's affecting the, um, it's affecting the uh, pathways that are going from the same side of each eye. So it's going to be either the left side of the left eye and the left side of the right eye, or the right side of the right eye and the right side of the left eye. That's homonymous hemianopia. So the upshot of that is you end up with a visual field cut. So people, it appears to be a full visual field to them, but they cannot um, perceive things that are on the side of the visual field cut. With bitemporal hemianopia, it sort of uh, gets rid of their peripheral vision and narrows things in. With um, homonymous hemianopia, um, they get a one-sided visual field cut. So the, the last part of that, if you have um, an incomplete lesion of any tract that's posterior to the optic chiasm, you can get um, partial loss of vision from the contralateral visual field. So um, you can sort of think of these as almost as anterior to posterior. Um, so the um, optic nerve is more anterior, the occipital lobe is more posterior, and it's the progression of where the lesions are. So I want you to um, be able to describe what each of those are and um, what the lesions look like basically, or what the um, visual field deficits look like. So cortical blindness is where someone has no awareness of visual information, and it's not anything wrong with their eyes, it's not anything wrong with the optic tracts, but there's actually a lesion in the brain. So it's the, it's the primary visual cortex that's affected in this case, so someone who's cortically blind. You'll see cortical blindness in people who have posterior artery strokes, and we'll talk about this more in the CVA chapter. Um, so cortical blindness is a, um, a brain injury, a lesion in the brain, rather than a lesion of one of the um, visual tracts. Blind sight is a, is a phenomenon where a person who doesn't have any awareness of that visual, vis, um, visual information, um, they can orient or point to or detect movements of visual objects. So um, it's considered to be a, a compensatory um, mechanism. Um, so they're getting those signals in there somewhere, but they're not getting to the primary visual cortex where they can actually detect things. Um, but they can orient to or point to or detect movements of visual objects. and. Um, the research suggests that blind sight is contingent on um, intact function of the retina and pathways from the retina to um, the lateral geniculate nucleus. So there's some processing going on in the thalamus, and it allows people to orient. So um, pretty interesting, actually, I think. So um, in the next section, we're going to talk about eye movements.